Hey, welcome guys. This is going to be teaching the concept of progressive versus interlaced technology. Now, interlaced is primarily used in, like, say, camcorders, uh, cable satellite boxes, so on and so forth. Progressive is primarily used in, say, computer monitors and TVs, for example. Now, um, before we continue any further, one thing I want to specify is that the P in 1080p, 720p, uh, 2160p, which is 4K, the P does not stand for pixel. That is 100% incorrect if anyone tells you that. Now, understanding what is 720 in the, in the 720p, what is 1080, what is uh, 4K, 8K, 16K, I'll be explaining that in a different video. I'll get more detail about it. You can find a link to that video in the video description. It's also part of this playlist. Um, it, but some of the concepts in that video overlap with this one, so it's best to watch these two together. For the sake of this video, however, we're going to use the number 1080 for progressive and 1080 for interlaced. Just to use one number is much easier. So we're going to start with interlaced. And we want to have a, a TV. We don't care what size it is, we just want a TV. And again, we're sticking with the number 1080 for this whole uh, video, right? So the number 1080 in progressive or interlaced, doesn't matter where it is. The number 1080 derives from how the resolution of the TV is. So 1080 gets the resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080. This is where pixels come in. This is where we're ignoring progressive for now. We're talking about pixels. So the, the way it's designed is that you have a resolution of 1920 by 1080. What that basically means is the resolution is you have 1920 little pixels, which are like little dots that change color. Every time the picture or the video, whatever you're watching changes, these pixels will change colors to adjust to show you that image or video you're watching. So 1920 means you have 1920 little pixels, which are like tiny little dots. You might have seen if you go right up to your TV screen, which you're going to blind yourself going across the TV. And that happens 1,080 times. So you have 1,920 little dots that go across ver uh, horizontally, and that happens 1,080 times. New lines. So you have 1,080 lines of 1,920 pixels. I hope that makes sense. Um, it, what happens with interlaced? So we're going to stick with interlaced for now. Is that when you're seeing the picture, uh, interlaced will show the image in halves. So it'll interlace half and half. So for example, you have all the odd lines which get projected first. So you have the first line of pixels, then line 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, so on and so forth, until you reach line uh, 1079. Because that's, that's the last odd number before we hit 1080, right? Then what happens, those odd lines, which are all being projected, will turn off. And then the even lines turn on, which is lines number 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way up until 1080. And that happens several times within a second. And it happens so fast, you think you're, you're watching a full moving image, but you're not. So, to make things very easy to understand, to simplify it even more, in case you're still confused, Let's pretend my right hand are the odd lines, and this is the even lines. Let's put them together, and you see, I don't know, someone playing baseball. Right now, you're seeing a whole picture of someone playing baseball. And let's pretend that this flickering happens 30 times within a second. So what happens is, the odd lines will show an image. Only the odd lines. You're, you're technically seeing half an image because it's all the odd lines. It'll show. Then they'll flicker turn off and the even lines project. And they keep switching 30 times within a second. That is so fast that the human eye perceives it as a moving object. That's how interlace works. Now, you might have seen some situations where uh, you have an interlaced video playing and the object is moving very fast and you see these jaggedy lines in the corners. That's because TVs are primarily designed for progressive technology, but the source of the video might be interlaced. So what happens is TVs use this technology called deinterlacing. Um, they try to deinterlace this to make it look like progressive. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't, and you might see those jaggedy lines still. It really depends. Now, you might have guessed it already, progressive is kind of the opposite. It is constantly flickering 
the whole picture multiple times a second. This is very similar to the concept of frames per second or FPS. You might have heard a lot of video game players mention FPS or frames per second. That's what this comes in. Uh, they're, they're kind of very related. And I have another video explaining and showing frames per second because progressive is, is showing an image flicker maybe 30 times within a second, the whole picture. They don't interlace one after the other. So if you have HD cable, um, HD satellite, strong chances are you're watching interlaced technology. You just don't realize it. And you might be wondering why. You see, when HD TV came out, um, the TV service providers had a big challenge. How do we get HD channels out to our consumers when it's just so bloody expensive? They couldn't broadcast 1080p because this whole picture is being broadcasted per second. It's, it's, it's a huge amount of data. TVs that you watch nowadays, it's just all data, right? So they're like, well, let's project 1080i because it's not as much data. You, remember, you're only flickering half the amount of images on and off rapidly compared to the whole image, which is 1080p. But then here's the challenge. Interlace doesn't work well with progressive TVs and most TVs are progressive. How do they get around that? Well, some TV service providers are like, well, let's do 720p. We're not gonna give you 1080p, it's too much data. We'll reduce the picture size, the picture quality slightly. We'll give you 720p. This whole concept has been happening for years and it's still gonna continue on for many years to come. It might upset you to just realize this now, but you might've noticed this. You just didn't really think about it. If you have, say, a HD cable satellite box, you might have noticed in the top corner when you change channels or hit the display button for more information, it'll show 1080i 60 or 720p 30 or 1080i 30. Or you might just see 1080i. That's it. You won't see 1080p, just 1080i. You might not think much about it, but you're actually watching interlaced. Here's the problem. Sports tend to move very fast and you can see a lot of jaggedy lines with interlaced. So sports channels tend to broadcast in, yep, 720p, you're not usually watching 1080p. Only some TV service providers are catching up to 1080p because they have to invest money into it, but they're like, well, why go into 1080p? Let's just jump straight to 4K because that's the next thing. So strong chances are you're watching sports in 720p at, well, 30 frames a second. Whereas maybe news channels, for example, that play news 24 seven like CNN, they have slow moving objects, so they might display 1080i 30 times a second. So that's the concept of progressive and interlaced. Uh, seems like interlaced isn't relevant, but chances are you're still watching it on one channel. And you have to understand it's not just up to the TV providers, so whoever's providing you HD cable, it's also up to the ch TV channel as well, because they might invest it in cameras that record in interlaced, and they don't want to invest in progressive until they go to 4K. So. First, it depends on what did the TV channel record in? Did they record an interlaced or progressive? And then how is your TV service provider gonna send it to you? Are they gonna give it to you in your HD cable box through interlaced or progressive? Or is there a button on your remote to switch between either or, uh, 1080i or 720p? There's a lot of X factors. All in all, what you need to realize is that these TV channel providers try to do a good job, it looks well. It's really hard to tell the difference between 1080i and 720p, but that's the concept of progressive versus interlaced. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.